Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Christ, our Passover, has been sanctified for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We acknowledge that our community gathers within the ancestral tradition and unceded territory of the Silix people of the Okanagan Nation, and we commit ourselves to the ongoing work of reconciliation. We greet all those in this room as well as those online. Please join me with the psalm responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy is pure. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Creator has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord has I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. My time of suffering is over. I will offer thanks to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord. I will give thanks to you, O God. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is our in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. Our Good friends. Okay. Is it you or me? You. Go. <laughs> Our opening hymn is Jesus Christ Has Risen in the Blue Book, number 203.
life and power through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Acts 10, 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that, and he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us share in an arrangement of him 235, 235, Murberry Mary. First verse will be sung solo, second verse by the quartet, at that point, I invite you to stand and join us in the concluding verses. 235. <laughs>
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of the first importance what I in turn had received, that Jesus Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and did, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaimed, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposed him to be the gardener. She said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and saw, said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet reached, ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, on my, to my God and your God. 
Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had, what he had said, these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. The words of the anthem today. In a world where people walk in darkness, let us turn our faces to the light, to the light of God revealed in Jesus, to the day star scattering our night. For the light is stronger than the darkness, and the day will overcome the night. Though the shadows linger all around us, let us turn our faces to the light. A voice is heard in Rama, Hiroshima, Salvador. Women refusing comfort, for their children are no more. No garland of lovely flowers can dispel the ancient grief, or silence the vanquished voices that abhor the war machine. 
The song was written by Colleen Fulmer, a lay Franciscan working in Los Angeles with displaced persons from South and Central America in the 1980s. I had cause to reach out to her in relation to a chapter in my book, copies are still available, but her order has evolved back to the mother house in Cincinnati and she has disappeared from public life. Her songs were hugely inspiring to me at the time and to many others, through which we glimpsed the world through resurrection justice, an image I cling to today. Shaping the tune, or taking the tune, and reshaping the poetry, I have updated it for the current moment. A voice is heard in Gaza, Kiev and Krakow, Port-au-Prince, men and women refusing violence as the missiles fly above. No will to change the pathway toward a never-ceasing death. Clouds of hopeless, hungry victims chanting, now let there be love. Looking around, I feel like crying and crying and crying. There is no end to violence, it seems, and it seems the promise of resurrection justice is still, even on this Easter day, far away from us. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Sometimes, possibly all the time, we need an angel, a guardian angel, a truth-telling angel. A few years ago, the primus of the Scottish Episcopal Church, David Chillingworth, preached at St. Paul's Cathedral in Kamloops, where I was dean. Speaking on the feast of St. Michael and all angels, he mused aloud, do I believe in angels? Living in Scotland, though of Irish descent, he answered, I think so. As Montreal-based philosopher Charles Taylor argues, we from the educated and supposedly sophisticated North have a disenfranchised view of the world. Angels? Why not? Read Hebrews chapter 1. And the angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? It's a good question. Let's hear the answer. They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. If it's happened to you, it's happened to me. So often I have a similar feeling partly due to my vision challenges. Where have I met this person standing before me before? They look familiar. Years ago at a golf course in Victoria where I was helping with a charity event, someone enthusiastically said hello to me. So I replied, have we met? Well, yes, he said, you buried my mother. <laughs> Whoops. Remember in Genesis 18, where Abraham entertained three angels unawares. Never say never. And the angel asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? John loves this language of curiosity. Who are you looking for? In 139, Jesus answered two inquisitive disciples, Andrew and Peter, who wondered where Jesus was staying. And Jesus responds, come and you will see. Elsewhere in John 12, 20, we hear, now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. And these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, sir, we wish to see Jesus. In a church I served in the 1980s, this text in the King James translation was emblazed on the pulpit desktop. So
Sir, we wish to see Jesus. It was a friendly reminder of the purpose, gift, and discipline of Christian preaching to all who stood in that pulpit. Thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. A brief confession at this point. I love murder mysteries, especially British crime dramas. My first experience of the genre was through the craft of Dorothy Sayers. And I do wonder if Anne Barton is in the room or watching online this morning. I need to have this conversation with her. Typically, in murder mysteries, there is a death and a body and a question, who did it? In this case, we find, at least initially, there is no body and an empty tomb, but we know who did it. This is a marvelous reversal of the usual form. And then, in the end, there's an amazing kicker to the story. Mary finds the body fully alive, enfleshed, so much so that she thought he was the gardener. And once enlightened, she wants to hang on to him. Literally, it's mind-blowing. It's love-showing. It's a story worth telling and sharing. Yes, he is the gardener, but he serves the garden which is the world, all creation, from the first garden of the book of Genesis to the last vision quest described in the book of Revelation. And Mary describes or exclaims, I have seen the Lord. And she tells the disciples who tell others. And well, <laughs> here we are today. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and share with me in the text of the Apostles' Creed. We proclaim together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. These are our prayers of the people for Easter. Blessed be the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. He has broken free from the tomb and opened for us the gate to eternal life. Blessed be the risen Lord. He comes from the dead to new life. He brings us light and joy and hope. Our response this morning will be, Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. Holy and everlasting God, we give thanks for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
In him, light triumphs over darkness. Life triumphs over death. In him are our hope and the promise of eternal life. We pray this morning for all who preach the gospel, for those who lead others to the risen Lord, and for those who teach of his forgiveness, that we may all rejoice in the power of his resurrection. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. Lord, we eagerly await the coming of peace on earth. Remind us daily of your voice saying, peace be with you. May your peace begin within our hearts and in our homes. Let your peace grow in our communities and throughout this nation of Canada. May your peace spread to the entire world. So we take, pray today for the peace of Jerusalem. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. Father God, we pray today that your Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen us in mission and in service to all those we meet, that day by day we may grow in love for you and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. During this joyful Eastertide, we pray for the well-being and happiness of all our families and our dear friends. And we pray especially for our children and our grandchildren. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of West Indies, of its primate, the very Reverend John Walder Dunlop Holder. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we ask for your blessing on the Most Reverend Anne Germond, Metropolitan, and the people and clergy in the ecclesiastical province of Ontario. In our own Diocese of Kootenay, we give thanks for the many special qualities of Archbishop Lynn McNaughton, also for the dedicated and ongoing leadership of the supportive team of archdeacons and regional deans throughout the Kootenay and Okanagan regions. In our parish here at St. Saviour's, we're so grateful for the work of the wardens of our parish council and the bishop's personnel committee. And also, and especially this morning, for the weekly dedication and service of our altar guild. We're grateful for our deacons and visiting clergy who are helping us to fill in the needs of ministry, especially our Pastor Ken this morning, during the absence of our former rector, Nick Pang. And finally, we ask you to guide and bless Nick as he begins his new role in the Diocese of New Westminster. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the congregations in the eastern area of Manitoba and the Northwestern Ontario Synod. In the Anglican Council of Indigenous Peoples, we pray for Archbishop Chris Harper and for all the Indigenous Peoples in the Diocese of Algoma. Jesus, risen Lord, open the gate of glory to all those who give their services to your glorious kingdom here on earth. Almighty God, we pray today for those whose homes and families have been devastated in the areas of conflict and war, especially in the Ukraine and the Gaza region of the Holy Land. 
Please free them from the evils of prejudice, of cruelty, and revenge. Take down the barriers which divide one from another and make all hatreds cease. Jesus, risen Lord, open to us the gate of glory. Lord, we pray this Easter day for all who are weeping with heavy hearts and sadness or serious illness. Here at St. Saviors, we ask your blessing on those who are known to us who are listed in our parish prayer list this morning. We pray today, and please join me in, in praying for Ali, Alice, Allison, for Andrew, Belva, Beryl, Brenda, Callie, Carol, Coral, and Rachel, for Cyril, Deneen, Dave and Bev, David, Dylan, Effie, Emily, Erica, Gabe, Gavin, Jean and Ken, Annette, Heather, Ian, Jack, Jackie, Janessa, Janet, Jim, Judy, Kim, Christina and family, for Lee, Linda, Leanne, Lori, Luke, Yala and family, Margareta, Nathan and Chloe, for Peter, PB, Sherry, Simon, Spencer and Diana, Sue and Zoe. And please pray also for any others known to you who are in need of comfort and healing this Easter. Jesus, risen Lord, open to all those who suffer the gates of glory. Finally, Lord, we give you thanks and praise you for the Easter blessing of eternal life. We rejoice with your saints in glory, and we pray for all our loved ones who have now departed this life, freed from sorrow and pain. May they rest eternal with our Savior Jesus Christ in your heavenly kingdom. And merciful God, as we go out into the world today, help us reflect your love and your mercy to our families within our church and to our community, that we may be seen as followers of Christ throughout our daily lives. We pray all this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sin, confident in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, in what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please take a moment as appropriate to acknowledge and practice peace. As the table is prepared, we enthusiastically praise God, accompanied by percussion and voice. They crucified my Savior 233. strength and our salvation receive all we offer you this day and grant that we who have confessed your name and received new life in baptism may live in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ the Lord Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is time to give our thanks and praise. 
eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone, whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore we raise our voices with angels and archangels, forever praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carried them home. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the re redemption of your reconciling life. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts. longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all those whose lives are marked by suffering, our sisters and brothers, and when we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. 
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We be many are one body, for we all share.
The formal liturgical instruction at this point is, it's time to make some noise. With the word hallelujah, which has occurred several times in our rite, but now we will sing it to a traditional Af African rhythm. If you're following the music number 82 in common praise, we are only singing the refrain and not the verses. Pauline will play it through once, and again, we're not doing the verses, just the refrain. And the quartet, and by the way, thank you gentlemen for being with me today. We still haven't got a name. I think the good old boys we've eliminated, so we'll see what else. But our praise continues. Hallelujah. Join us when you feel able and called. and praise and commit ourselves to follow in your name to tell your story and live the life you laid out for us now to all who heed your name we sing your glory now and forever Amen.
Friends in the room and friends in line, online, gather in courage, stand in hope. For a wind is on the rise, a strong wind coming, and many anxious eyes turn to the sky. Gather in courage, stand in hope, for that wind will break upon the rock, the rock of our shared love, its clouds left in tatters, the bright sun returning to claim the prize of peace. And the blessing of God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, be with you now and, for those, and with those for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Please be seated for some very important announcements. So, hallelujah, the Lord is risen. Hallelujah. That was pretty uh, lovely service. A thank you to the very Reverend Ken Gray, to the quartet singing here, our musician, our cantor, our deacon. I think they just gave a good feeling of the celebration. Yes. For those that don't know, my name is Joanne Simpson. I'm the Bishop's Warden here. And we've been going through the calls for justice for missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Today we're on number 5.14. We call upon federal, provincial, and territorial governments to thoroughly evaluate the impact of mandatory minimum sentences as it relates to the sentencing and over-incarceration of Indigenous women, girls, and 2S LGBTQQIA people, and to take appropriate action to address their over-incarceration. So that's 5.14. What a wonderful Holy Week we've had for those who've been able to take part in any or all of the services. We had our Monday, Thursday at St. Stephen in Summerland. Uh, again, it was uh, the very Reverend Ken Gray who led that. Uh, and then we had Good Friday here with uh, the Reverend Trevor Freeman, and today what a beautiful celebration of the resurrection. We have Centering Prayer still every Friday at 9.30, that's on Zoom. Um, it's pretty interesting, that's been going since I think it said 2015, and uh, was in person, now it's on Zoom. Uh, it's a time to be quiet and pray together. And there's no, I apologize to those at home, there's no online service yet on the website. I'm very hopeful that in the next week or maybe two, we'll get it on there. We have a new person um, filling in in the office. Beryl, our office administrator, continues to be on sick leave. But Denise um, started last Wednesday and I'm hoping she can figure out how to put that on the website because I haven't figured that out yet. So our office will be open Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays when Denise is there. If you go by, stop in and say hello. A big thank you today to the Altar Guild who did such a good job cleaning, polishing, and all the beautiful um, arrangements. It's a lot of hard work behind the scenes, so we want to say, say thank you to them. And the flowers, we put in Parish Life, a thank you to all the people who donated to flowers. Um, but the joy of technology, I had all the donors' names and some got missed. So um, that was Jerry Hagemeyer, Carol Parker, and Donna Warmald also contributed, but were not in the list in Parish Life. So thank you to everyone who did that. Uh, there's no coffee hour today, so you can go be with your family, uh, with your cooking your turkey or your ham or whatever. Uh, just other announcements. Free Store is actively looking for uh, men's clothing. And, um, oh yeah, there's the men, Man of the Shroud exhibition at St. Mary's Parish. That was in Parish Life. It'll be April 4th to 7th, and all the details are in Parish Life. 
And exciting news, we're planning a joint fashion show with our Redeemer Lutheran Church on Sunday, April the 28th. So if you're interested in that, the tickets are limited and they'll be available very soon. The fashion show will be by Mi Amore Clothing Boutique. So we're looking for help to put together a couple of baskets for raffling at the tea. We're hoping some parishioners would work together maybe to make a tea and biscuit basket and maybe another one to do a date night at home basket. So if you can help or have any questions, you can speak to Alita if you put your hand up, or there she is, Alita, and Joan Dalby is the other person if you can help or you want more details. And then another very important thing, the Bishop's Search Committee, I don't know, how many of you read your email last night or this morning and saw what I'm talking about, yeah? Well, we've got the first draft of the parish profile. That'll be in your email if you haven't looked already. Um, burn the midnight oil on that one, I'll tell you. That was part of my um, paying for my sins through Lent, was working on that. <laughs> but the committee has worked very hard, and uh, that's the first draft. So what we would like to suggest um, first of all, you don't need to print it. If you don't want to, you can just look at it online and see what all your um, additions or edits or comments are. Next Sunday at the coffee time, we'll have a table that'll be a discussion table. Any comments, ideas, suggestions you want to give us, um, the, the search committee will be sitting at the table and you can come and, and tell us your thoughts then. We'll be happy to take them. On the email it said, reply to Shirley Wild. Please ignore that. I'm sure Shirley doesn't, she's not even on the committee. She doesn't want to get all the emails. <laughs> so send, send any comments or, or questions. If you do have to email before Sunday, send them to me. Um, I think my information's on the back of the leaflet or, anyway, Joanne Simpson, you can find me somewhere, phone the church office. Um, but mostly it's next Sunday. So next Sunday you'll be able to give us all your input on that. Um, and if there's anyone here who would like to see the parish profile but doesn't have email, uh, so wouldn't have received it in email, our people's warden, Pat Rolls, if you can just, yeah, that's Pat, uh, she can get you a hard copy. But we're limiting who we give them out to because there's a lot of pages. We don't want to keep printing them. If you don't get it on your own, you can get it there. But we're very excited that that's finally done. Okay, happy Easter to everyone. We make our way from church this morning singing Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord, number 405, 405. Mm -hmm. 